the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. And I'm going to use the scripture to show it. Is the fact is that if you're going to live by the law, then you have to give the offering that God will accept. And why did the world hate us, those who believe in Jesus Christ, those who are actually living and trusting in Christ? Why is there hate? And this is what we're going to go through uh, today to talk about uh, is why do people hate a believer? Jesus said that they said the world will hate you. My question is why? And, and, and I will show you that this may be the, the uh, issue uh, <laughs> that, that tells you where that pattern of hate came from and why is that pattern of hate maybe even today you know when the hebrews talk about the fact is that the, the, the hebrews in this country uh talks about the fact is that they they there's a lot of things that have been going against those who were uh, jewish uh have a jewish background uh that was brought here by ships and so forth that a lot of us may have been part of the lost tribes of, of uh, Israel, uh, and, and that that could be true. I don't, I don't, I don't. That that's that could be true, and I'm not going to dispute that. I don't, I don't think that's a uh, that's not a far stretch at all. When, but I do know that when he Christ said they hate the church, it, is the fact is that I see something a pattern here that has been started from the beginning of time, all right? So you see my scripture, why are you hated for doing his will and for pleasing him? Uh, I want you to know that because like I said, and here's the next scripture, and I wanna show this, it's, it's interesting, this pattern that began all the way back in the beginning. I'm, I'm, once again, I put it in Hebrews 11, six says, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Are you with me? He is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. That is one of the things of pleasing God is our diligence to seek him you know and then that diligence it goes a long way because that diligence is to to bear the relationship with him right so that that you do so that when we all go before him he we don't want to sit we don't want to hear uh nobody wants to hear to say i never knew you see a lot of cases we may diligently seek recognition of people pleasing people, trying to do things in the flesh and everything, but the Bible says this is seek him. But I, I want to show in, in, in Genesis this pattern of behavior of brothers against brothers and sisters against sisters and nation against nations. Where did all that come from? We know it's a spiritual warfare. We know that the devil comes, he's the author of confusion. We know that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. The thing is, there was that pattern, and why is it Christ said that we would be hated of the world? If you're not, we're in this world, we're not of this world. If you're of this world and you doing and you are walking in the kingdom of God, the world hates you. And and he said that. But now I want to show you why. And I'm telling you is that those who please God, the world hates you. That, that is the bottom statement right there for you, is that if you're pleasing God, you, you're not pleasing the world. And the world hates you for that. And it started all the way back in Genesis. And in Genesis, fact, is we're going to talk about the law. 
I want to tie something in there just first going over this story, right? So look at this. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Amen. And she again bared his brother, Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord. Cain brought fruits of the ground. They, they, they talk about from, from corn and wheat and they make bread and all those other things that people we, we live off and eat with. Uh, he brought that fruits of the ground that he labored for and the earth gave up. And but the fact he planted the seeds, tilled the ground, you know, harvested, he brought that, brought an offering to the Lord with those things. And Abel, he also brought the first lean of the flock, you know, the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel in his offering. Now, what you need to catch in a lot of people sitting there saying, wait, wait, man, what's the problem? Abel was, first of all, Abel's honoring God with the first name of his flocks, right? He was saying is that I'm, I'm going to give a percentage of the, of, the, of the animals that I'm responsible for uh, as an offering to God. Uh, you got to remember, and just in case you don't remember, and we just read about it without the remission of sin, without blood, there's no remission of sin. And Adam and Eve were the first people who sinned, and God used animal clothes, uh, uh, coverings to, to, to cover them, uh, meaning that those animals were sacrificed. Those animals were killed for the covering of man. In the back in the garden, um, somebody would say, "Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't get that, man. I don't, I don't see that. Let me, let me see if I can uh, come on, just in case. We got to make sure we cover things, right? We're gonna go, we're gonna go with the uh, Esau again. Bring that up real quick, and we're gonna go ahead and share the electronic Bible." quick and we're going to go up to Genesis chapter 3 and what, I, what we're talking about toward the end of Genesis uh, where he said let me see here he said uh, my Genesis, I ain't going to change it then. excuse me sorry go back up to Genesis Go to chapter 3 in Genesis. This is the fall. This is the fall of man, falling from the grace of God. And uh, it says here, take it to the end here, where it says, verse 20, 31. Uh, you can read three, I mean, three, chapter 3, Genesis 20 and then 21. It said, And Adam called his wife name Eve because she was the mother of all living things talking about all of mankind human right <laughs> as a mother birthing and, and unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord make a coat of skin and close them and the Lord God said behold the man has become as one of us to know good and evil and now lest he put forth his hands and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground. And that's, you know, that Cain was the first child born, was doing that as well, till the ground from which it was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life, right? So, but my point is on that is that uh, that coat of skin in verse 21 
unto Adam also in his wife did the Lord make coats of skins, right? Uh, and clothes them. What coats of skin are you talking about? In other words, they had to use uh, animal sacrifice in order for uh, them to uh, uh, basically there, there was sacrifice for them, clothed them. He clothed them with skin, right? And it's interesting when you talk about in uh, Romans, it says, uh, in my flesh dwell is no good thing, you know? Uh, but the bottom line, there was a sacrifice there. But what we're saying is that back to our scriptures again in uh, Genesis chapter 4 is that God was not pleased God had respect for Ab Abel's offering just, just keep that in mind God respected the offering of Abel which was when he gave the sacrifice of the firstlings of the flock uh, to God, you know, and obviously being that his responsibility was to keep the sheep or keep the animals, uh, that in most cases, the Adam and Eve and Cain all had access to those types of, had to ask, you know, access to those animals to do blood sacrifice. That's what they was doing. I mean, Adam, Abel wasn't doing it for, for just the thought for his own. Uh, he did it for a reason. He said this, this is an offering to God uh, for the blessing, for, for what God gives us, right? So I'm just saying is Adam, Abel gave a animal as an offering and God had respect unto Abel's offering because that's most likely the instructions that Adam gave his children that they're supposed to give an offering to the Lord. And we said is that without the remission, without blood, there's no remission of sin. Then in most cases, this is what Adam was, uh, Abel was taught to do and, at, and Cain was as well, right? But if you look at the scripture, the next scripture, but unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect. God had not respect and Cain was very wroth because of the fact that his offering was not respected. You know, I guess sometimes how we are, this is us, right? Uh, we, we fit there and, 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 and get thinking that we, we, we do or something and we want God to, 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 to respect it, even though that's something that God didn't tell you to do. And then you get mad because you're doing something contrary to what God told you to do, right? And, and, that, and I think that's always been the problem with man is making sure they follow the will of God because that's what we're supposed to do. But you know, that, that's what I think that goes into the line of where everybody got all their different ways of trying to come to, to, to go to heaven uh, and not realize that, that, <laughs> that the only way to get there is to do it his way, you know. When I even talk, when I think about even in uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter uh, what six, I mean twenty-eight, God was talking about the blessing first, and then at one through one through what one through fifteen, and then after they said, if you don't do follow my commandments, then what from fifteen to sixty-six. These are the different curses you're going to get. Well, the point is that one of them was doing, giving offering to God, right? So back to this again, it said, but unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect. God did not respect it. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is that continent fallen? If thou doest well, if thou doest well, that's what God is telling all of us. Remember the scripture said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. He said, if thou, verse 7, in Genesis 4, verse 7, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? 
God is telling every last one of us, if we do well, he will accept us. And if thou does not well, he didn't say perfect. To well does it mean you, 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 you exceeded, not exceeded, but you met the, the basic requirements. So you did well. See, to do exceptional is that you did great. You did outstanding. You did exceptionally well. That ain't what God is saying. He said, if you just do well, if you just just, just stay on the mark, you, you'd be accepted. But he said, but he said, if he does not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, sin. The desires of sin. He said, and unto thee shall be his desires. I'm his desires, sin. And thou shall rule over him. Uh, that means your you, you reign in it is over sin. You know? And, and the fact is that uh, to me it's saying is that thou shall rule over him. I guess to me I think it is that sin shall rule over Cain. In other words, he'd be controlled by his sin nature, right? And then verse eight. That's why this is this is interesting, and I wanted this to seem to be the pattern all the way to us today. And it, like I said, if you go, I want to. I just want to reemphasize the fact is that the children of Israel, that the Moses gave that a law to do sacrifice, and they had the tabernacle. And they had the ark, but they were doing sacrifices all the way from the beginning. There was a Cain and Abel, they didn't have a, a temple, but yet they were doing blood sacrifices, animal sacrifices for or giving offerings to God uh, using animals, right? So the, the, the thing I'm talking about is that this pattern of animal sacrifice has been there from the beginning, right? It was a foreshadowing of Christ as far as shedding of blood for sin, for transgressions, for offerings to God. So back in verse, so for, uh, verse eight again, it came talk with Abel's brother and it came to pass when they were in the field, the Cain rose up against Abel's brother and slew him. Now, the question is, why did Cain kill his brother? Why did he? And, and most people know, if you don't know, it is out of jealousy. But jealousy of what? The jealousy of the fact is that God was accepting, considered his offering to be acceptable. And Cain offering fruits of the ground, fruits of potatoes and, and vegetables and carrots and anything else that he was growing and harvesting, God, he gave that, he gave those things an offering to God, it was not acceptable. Why? Because it was not the foreshadowing of his son that he would give for the world, for the remission of sin. But the Bible said, without the blood, there is no remission of sin. Catch where I'm coming from. Cain gave fruits and wheat and different types of vegetables, they were not shedding of any blood that there was no remission of sin. So his offering was not accepted because it was not what was ordained by God back in Genesis. Somebody said, Dan, that's what I'm saying there. I just want to catch those who sit there and say, well, they can't do these things today because of the temple. And the temple, this was this pattern of offering to God was all the way back in Genesis. This pattern of behavior, of giving sacrifices to God started all the way back in Genesis. It started back the offering that was accepted by God was and did and is what God requires when you're giving an offering to God starting back in Genesis and under the law, if you're not receiving Jesus Christ as your, uh, 
as your offering. As the offering. I think, I mean, I think we need to look at that and understand it. The offerings. The, you, it's, 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 it's a pattern of behavior, of expectation, if you're going to go by the law. If you're going to go by the law, if you're not going to take Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and the fact that he has redeemed us from the curse of the law, then you have the law that you have to do because in the law, the one of the structures is the sacrifice. There's 613 different laws beside the Ten Commandments that the Jewish people were living by and many of you know that. If you don't, I'm just telling you, it's 16, 13, 613 of them. And you gotta do those festivals. And you gotta go into, uh, when, they, when they went to the old Sabbath day, uh, they were actually doing, uh, they had to do offerings. That's where they bought turtle doves and stuff like that uh, to, to, as peace offerings or sin offerings and so forth, you know, but, the point was that obviously that was pleasing God doing that, right? And Abel was doing something that was pleasing God. And Cain was upset because Abel was doing that. He was jealous of what Abel was doing, right? So let's go to the next thing. I want, I want, it's, it's getting, I know you're getting where I hope you're getting where I'm coming from. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. He lied to God. He knows where he's at. Am I my brother's keeper? Now, that's a question that God didn't answer, but obviously because they, that should have been a rhetorical question. Yes, you are your brother's keeper. Yes, you're supposed to love your brother. Yes, you're supposed to care about where he is and, and what he's doing and what's going on in his life. Yes, you are his brother's, you are your brother's keeper. He said, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, where what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. What have you done? The blood of your brother's blood cries unto me out of the ground. And now thou art cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall now henceforth give unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. And you're sitting there saying, Wait a minute. You just punished somebody else more than what they can bear. You just killed somebody. And you're trying, you said, it's, just, it's funny how the world do that right when we we got this hate and all this other stuff but then when we we are caught and we are convicted we're gonna sit there and say i can't bear it we don't think somebody can bear you killing them either huh when we want to sit there and kill somebody because of the color of skin because they're at the group because their religion or their faith, you want to kill somebody. But this is what I want to catch out is guys. I we just read this, right? You just you got the whole gist of the the fact is that the law requires you from Moses, it requires you to to have these blood sacrifices. And it is nothing in the Bible said that you need the temple to do that. And and obviously these two guys one of them was actually pleasing God with his offerings. Well, the other guy's offering was not accepted. And I was, and then the, the, the one that had the unacceptable offering, instead of seeking to do well and line up with God's will, decided to go and hate the person that was pleasing God or had respectable offerings to God. And now I want to bring this up is those who live by the law we're talking about the jewish people we're talking about the hebrews we're talking about even other groups that, that claim that they gotta go by the law what offering are you giving 
if you because if you go by the law, that means you gotta you got to fulfill the law. Christ is the only one that could fulfill the law. But if you if you're gonna go by the law, you have to give a sacrifice. And if you're gonna give Jesus as your offering, then you should be doing what Jesus tells you to do. You can't sit there and, and try to play half in one way and say the law and then Jesus. But here's the point I'm trying to say. The world hates you because you're not giving an acceptable offering to God because you're not giving an offering at all. The world hates you because the world does not and won't give an acceptable offering to God. If they're under the law, they're not receiving Jesus Christ, then they have to give an offering to God. Right? The Jews have should be given offerings to God. The Hebrews should be given an offering to God. And you can't use the temple not being there. I don't, I don't know where you get that from. Where you get it from? I, I don't I don't know. Where is that in the in the Torah that you have to have the temple? Where? Where? Find it. Show it to me. But the point is that it was the offering to God. And if you're not given an acceptable offering to God. And yet, those who profess Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior have been giving an offering that is acceptable to God. Matter of fact, God gave the offering for sin to man through Jesus Christ. 